our next project, number two, is cloud-based ECG viewer. Uh, I'll turn things over to uh, Bill Wallace and Dr. Mike uh, Ibrahim. Yes, it's gonna. All right, I'm Bill Wallace. I'm a developer with Radical Imaging and I've been working with OHIF for a, a little while now. And I had been working with OHIF and I noticed that there are a fair number of image viewers out there. And, but there's not much in the way for, uh, for ECG. And there's no open source uh, web-based viewer at all. I do a fair bit of work in, in the open source area. So, you know, you can see clearly there's lots of NPR viewers and things like that um, down here, but, you know, the ECG viewers are very lacking. So the basic idea is to see if I could write a, an open source ECG viewer in the time that I had available for the hackathon. Um, and so there's a couple of things that I wanted to, to use for it. So I have another project called static.com web that has, that, that will deploy the .com web files to, uh, to the cloud. Um, and it just stores them as just files on, um, on disk that you just retrieve through a web browser and it's stored in the same path as you need. So it's just, it comes very, very fast. Um, and so that's used for the backend side of things. Um, and then, as I said, it's already available in S3 and CloudFront, just as static files. And I'll give a link at the end. Um, and then I wanted to use the OHIF framework because, well, sometimes you want to view ECGs and other things. Um, and add a, just add a, the plugin viewer for it. So the results are that there's now this open source software and it's in pull request right now to render the ECG format. That's, you know, it, it's just doesn't get a lot of attention out there for, for people. Um, you know, it's useful for actual users. So it's basic viewing, but you know, you can go ahead and take a look at things. Um, and uh, it uses the, the existing API. So the standard DICOM web interfaces nothing beyond that. So it doesn't have to run against the, the static DICOM web's backend. You can run it against whatever server as long as it supports DICOM web. Um, and I'll quickly show some of these here and let me actually show the, the viewer. So, you know, as you can see, um, I don't know why that one doesn't. Oh, <laughs> um, I'll run this one. Um, so, you know, you get the basic viewing of other, of ECGs here. Um, and then in the same viewer, you can just add the ECGs now. Um, and there's a bit of work to do still on the formatting of, to make sure that all of the, the background lines are still in the right spot, uh, but you know basically you get a bunch of different um, trace views, and you can scroll them and take a look at all of them. Um, so I'm hoping that this will be a basis for other people doing additional work in the future. Um, so any questions about this or? I can quickly um, just, I'm just gonna show the actual requests that get made. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a study query to, to query for things here. Then it does a, a serious query, um, queries for priors, um, gets the metadata and then, uh, Oh, this is the, um, so this is the metadata and this is a bulk data URI. So this is the binary data for the, for the actual 
um, waveforms. And so presumably the underlying uh, tech that you've done here would also apply to some of the recent uh, EEG extensions in DICOM for the neurophysiology? Um, yes, I would presume so. Cool. Um, I wasn't actually aware of them. So um, do you have a sample? Uh, I <laughs> Actually, uh, David, if you touched base with David Clooney, I think he's been working with the uh, the neurophysiology folks. So they may have something you can play with. They're they're much longer time frame though. They're they're you, and and I, that was my main question actually was um, what kind of interactions have you come across? Like a static display is an excellent starting point, and I imagine that serves a lot of the needs. Uh, do we know much about what kind of interactivity they they'd like with these? Um, like being a scroll and measure and. Yeah, so they do want to be able to scroll. Um, mm -hmm. And then they also want the ability to uh, click on points and get the um, reference line. The reference lines between those and have it automatically show you the min and max values. And um, so if you, I was thinking just having. Um, you know, click on one and then drag to the other spot that you want, and it would automatically show you the min and max values and mm -hmm. the time range. And that's close to a, what they use. Um, they also want the ability to add comments. So mm -hmm. um, there's all of this ability to add a, a structured report in for everything else. Um, so I was thinking it would be worthwhile having. Um, having the other one. Hmm. Okay. So my structure cool. report isn't working right now. That's what happens when you are working with bleeding edge software. Mm -hmm. uh, but the idea is that I, one could add sort of comments and things in here into the measurements. No, I love the idea of being able to include ECGs now as part of the enterprise imaging repertoire of, uh, of capabilities. Now, unlike radiology, which is kind of a monarch system, well, DICOM, it rules all, right? So all, almost all radiology data, imaging data is in DICOM. ECGs are kind of an oligarchy. Um, there are at least three dominant formats. One is DICOM ECG, but there's also SCP ECG, mm -hmm. and also the third one's HL7 base, I think it's called HL7 AECG or something like that. How does the system handle? So if you have a, uh, a health system that uses a heterogeneity of ECG machines and, and formats, do, do you also do you foresee a way to kind of convert it all to DICOM like you might other enterprise imaging modalities, or do you foresee kind of supporting multiple formats uh, in, in a system like this? Um. I think doing the the conversion at the back end makes a lot of sense. So actually converting into the DICOM format. And in fact, the, the static DICOM web is just a format converter. So right now it takes um, part 10 as the input. But you know, if you wanted to write all of the any other format, um, or if you wanted to be able to take in any of the other two formats and still write the the DICOM web output, you know, there's no reason you can't convert something else and just write the the metadata and the the waveform data. And I think that should right, be Bill, reasonably one last easy. question. Um, do you have the ability to pull the machine? annotations that you know are sometimes included in these waveforms like you know it tells you here's an lvh kind of thing are you able to pull those kinds of annotations um yes i i would want to pull those sorts of annotations um i don't currently have any samples that actually have any um so oops okay i need to send that to everybody um, this would be a challenge to Mohanad for more test data. <laughs> yeah. More test data. Mm. Okay, I think that's time, unless there's uh, any other quick question from the judges.